Hi, I'm back to talk about system versioning or temporal tables in SQL Server. In video one and two, I showed you how you can create a new system version table and how you can take an existing table and make it system versioned. Today, I'm going to talk about how you can take a table which has implemented a home cooked temporal pattern and make it system versioned. So let's jump over to Management Studio and have a look. So I have my table price list versioned. It has a product ID and a list price. It also has a valid from and a valid to. In this implementation of a temporal pattern, a current row or valid row has valid to equals null. So that's how I chose to implement it. And we have a primary key and so on and so forth. So we create the table. We add some data to it. Uh, and uh, it's a very minimalistic table for the demo. Uh, but it has two products, which has only a current price. You see valid two is no. And we have one product, which has a invalid price or invalidated price it was invalidated on uh, 20 21 03 03 uh, and uh, a new price was implemented the same time the same date so a price list with history in it let's do the insert now since we didn't have the as of keyword uh, in uh, previous versions of sql server we had to implement our own. So I've done that in a table valued function, get price as of, with a parameter as of. And what it does is it returns a table, it selects from price list versioned, where the parameter as of is between valid from and either valid to, or when valid to is null, the date 99, 99, 12, 31, uh, 23, 59, 59, and 997. That is the max date for a date time column or date time data type. So I create that and we can test it. So I can test it with a specific date, 1st of January 95. And at that specific time, we had two products with the prices product id 1 with the price of 10 and product id 2 with the price of 11. we can also query for the current prices so we send in current timestamp and we get three prices product id 1 <coughs> now with the price of 13 and product id 2 and 3. and uh, nothing complicated then came a new shiny SQL server and we want to implement system versioning. So we don't have to roll our own functionality for temporal. So we create first a history table. Same schema. So we have product ID and list price and valid from and valid to. Uh, we have a clustered index. We have data compression equals page. Very much like a automatically created uh, history table has with system versioning. So we create it. We need to move some data from the main table to the history table. And the data we need to move is the rows where valid to is not null because those are the invalidated rows. So we implement or we, we select the columns from price list version where valid to is not null. Let's do the insert first. And then we delete the same rows from price list versioned. So now we have prepared by moving the not current rows from the main table to the history table. Next step would be uh, 
to let's try first to alter the valid from column and make it generated always as row start we will try with one column and we get an error message valid from in table price list version cannot be specified as generated always in alter column statements and this is a limitation we have we cannot take a current column and make it generated always as row start or as row end for that matter so what we need to do is create new columns but i don't want new names for the columns because i don't want to change the schema of the table it's supposed to be uh, you know the, the application shouldn't need to change just because i change to use system versioning so what i will do is add valid from temp to temporarily store the valid from values we don't need one for valid two because that's null in all the rows in this table so we create this valid from temp and we update it to set it to be the same value as our valid from column we get a little warning invalid column name valid from temp temp Oh, because I first need to add it, then I can update it. So I need, oh, okay. I made a mistake, sorry. So update, there we go. So three rows updated. Um, we can look at the table, select star from price list version, not the history. And we have three rows, valid from temp is the same value as valid from, cool so now i will drop the columns valid from and valid to uh, because i want to recreate them with as daytime two and as generated always uh, so first i need to drop a default constraint i need to drop the primary key constraint because it contains the valid from um, and then i create a new primary key constraint with just the product id in it and so on. And then I drop the columns valid from and valid to. I have no luck right now because I make a typo all the time. So it's not supposed to be named price priced, it's price list. Okay. Ah. So now they're gone. We can query the table and it now only has product ID, list price and valid from temp. So now we can add valid from and valid to. So we alter table, we add valid from as daytime two. Generated always as row start. It has to be not null. It has to have a default because otherwise we can't define it as not null. So default current timestamp. Don't worry, um, even though valid from is not supposed to be current timestamp, we set it to that when we create the column. And then we have the valid two, uh, which is supposed to be the max date of a daytime two. And we have to define period for system time. So even if we don't implement temporal with this statement, we still have to define a period for system time if we add rows that are generated always as row start and row end. So this is what we need to do. The next thing we want to do is update valid from to be the value of valid from temp. Valid two is okay because it's going to be 99, 99, 31st of December, etc. Uh, so let's do the update and we will get an error message because we cannot update a generated always column. So what do we do now? Is this a catch 22? No, don't worry. We had to define period for system time when we created columns which are generated always, but we can drop the period for system time. So we need to do that. Alter table, price list version, drop period for system time. Uh, note that you can't run all these in the same batch 
because uh, SQL Server will see this update statement and will say, no, 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 you cannot do this because you have a period for system time. So you need the go statement between or the go keyword between the statements to make them run in their own batches because otherwise the, uh, the validation of this statement will fail. But now that I have dropped the period for system time, I can do my update and I can add the period for system time back again. And then I will drop my valid from temp column. So now the table, the main table is prepared. The history table is prepared. What's left to do is to enable system versioning. Alter table price list versioned set system versioning equals on with an existing history table. And now it works. And now we can do all our updates and so on. So let's say we update price list versioned set list price equals 15 where product ID equals two. And we can have a look at our main table and our history table. The main table still only has three rows because I only have three products. It has the current uh, list price of 15. That price became valid just seconds ago. And we have a the old record with the list price of 11, which was invalidated just seconds ago. So these are the steps you need to do uh, to make an existing table with valid froms and valid twos and make it system version. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. Uh, there will be a blog post on tsql.nu where I will share the demo code for this. Um, if you want to see more then uh, you know the usual subscribe to the channel etc. Uh, the same channel you can also find all the recordings from SQL Friday. If you don't know what it is, just scroll through the channel and, and look at all the amazing content that speakers have provided on SQL Friday. Thank you.